Hey guys, what's up? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Today, I'm going to be showing you some very hidden features in the Auto Drummer on GarageBand 10.2. I'm also super proud to say that I'm pretty sure I'm the first guy online to talk about this ever. I, I searched the internet um, for the last few days trying to figure out if someone else had taught this, and I don't think anybody has, so I'm really proud to be the first one. Um, you know, now just wait for all the other videos to come out behind mine, as usual. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Anyway, anyway. Um, uh, Auto Drummer is by far one of the most powerful features we have on GarageBand 10. It's one of those things that allows your recordings to sound a lot more natural and musical. Um, but being able to tailor this track to your particular tastes and your particular song is one of the best ways to make the overall project sound, you know, more realistic. Like you have a, you know, a good friend in that other room uh, recording drums on a song that you guys have played a thousand times and rehearsed at all these cool parts and stuff. Being able to tailor these sounds is key. But anyway, let's get right to the hidden thing that I'm pretty sure very few of you know about, okay? So what I want you to do is keep your eye where it says compression and effects right here. Okay, now I'm gonna go over to the plugin list and I'm gonna turn off the channel EQ like this. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna say no plugin. Keep your eye on where it says effects. Bam, now it says snare dampen, right? Now if you come over to here to compression, and I turn the compressor off, bam, you get a kick dampen, okay? Um, so that is pretty cool. So it does a couple of things. So let's just isolate these two sounds and I will sort of roll these back and forth for you to hear, okay? So it should be pretty obvious uh, what you're hearing there. And here, I'll just roll it back just so you can hear it again. Right, so it's doing two things, I think. I think, it, yes, it is EQing out the high end. Like, let's talk about the kick drum. It does EQ out the high end and the low end and just sort of softens the overall sound. But I would also say that it is um, dialing back what I would consider like a room mic in the room. You know, when you're recording drums, a lot of times you have some sort of uh, atmospheric or environmental microphone just to capture the room sound. As you turn this control down, or up rather, uh, to, to increase the amount of dampening, uh, you lose a lot of that room sound, which is cool. It just gives you a nice dry sound. Same thing with the snare and, you know, where it's sort of EQing out the high end um, and also decreasing the volume of that room microphone. Now, I will say this, being able to do this is so cool because you can finally actually manipulate these sounds in a way I don't think you knew about previously unless you figured it out like I did. Um, but being able to change these sounds to tailor your personal tastes and the song that you're recording is so awesome because the more you can tailor the drummer, the more musical it sounds, the more natural it sounds, the more realistic it sounds. And that's awesome, you know? Um, you know, I know that in GarageBand we have less features on the drummer than in Logic, um, but not as few as you think. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is the automation on here. Um, so I'm just gonna hit A on my keyboard, open up the automation track. And I just wanted to show you here, you do have the ability to control and manipulate the levels of each instrument, kick, snare, toms, hi-hat, cymbals, percussion, as individual tracks, right? So people are like, we don't have a mixer or it's hard to mix the individual drums. Um, yeah, it's not you know as easy as using automation on a mixer or something like that, but you can do it here, right? So like say, um, we'll just look at the hi-hat for example, and hi-hat, we'll turn it back on down here. And then I will say, I wanna see it. And there's the hi-hat now, right? So if I, you know, I can, I can do all sorts of things like just remove the hi-hat, maybe not quite that much, uh, remove it and like that, say this, 
right? And then bam, and then it's off and then it'll come on. It's not exactly off, I guess. Right? It decreases the volume greatly. Now, if I wanted to actually turn it off, I can definitely do that. Um, where is that hi-hat on and off, right? Super easy. Bam, bam. And then you pull. Actually, I didn't need that second dot there. Um, but here it's on and off. Right? So again, being able to manipulate these drums is so crucial to getting the tracks to sound, you know, realistic. And I just wanted to show you guys how much power you do have over these drum tracks. I get comments all the time about the lack of, you know, ability that the drummer has. And I usually disagree with what I get. You can properly mix these. Now, one thing that you might be saying, well, you can't pan it left and right. Um, you can also do that. However, what it requires you to do is, you know, you make a software instrument track, um, you know, whatever. It starts out as an electric piano, uh, but let's just make it a drum kit and we're using the SoCal drum kit, right? There is a decision that, you, you know, all engineers have to make when they record drums, which is do you mix them from the perspective of the drummer or do you mix them from the perspective of the audience member? So in, in this case of just the way Auto Drummer does create tracks, it does do it from the perspective of the drummer. What I mean by that is that, you know, the drummer, right-handed drummers, we're going to talk about right-handed drummers. So the drummer's sitting there and he's playing. So the hi-hat's going to be on his left side, which means that he will hear the hi-hat coming from his left ear more than he would his right. If you're an audience member, it would be the exact opposite, right? So you would mix it with the hi-hat on the right-hand side. Um, and, and the same goes with the ride cymbal. No, you know, do you want to hear it over here or do you want to hear it over there? So the way that Auto Drummer spits everything out is from the perspective of the drummer however if you want to change that it's pretty simple you would take this down here you take this i'm just in this case i'm going to grab this whole field and i'm going to drop it oh i'm going to copy it sorry i'm going to copy it i'm going to come down here and i'm going to paste it in here okay so now i have these drums in this field right if i wanted to um let's go and go to the editor and find the hi-hat. Where is it? Oh, these are all drums that are not on. Let's go up to here and turn them all on just so I can hear them. Okay. Oh, the hi-hat was fully off. <laughs> well, that explains a lot. Okay, so um, let's go back here. We're looking for the hi-hat. There it is. Okay. So I could take all of these hi-hats, right? All of them that I wanted at least, which is just this row right here. So I'm going to grab all of these guys, or as many of them as I can grab. Uh, I'm going to copy them, okay? And then I'm going to make another drum track, and then I'm going to paste them down in here, okay? So point is, now I do have the ability to pan this left or right, right? And I also have the ability to EQ it. Um, I can do anything I want. I can affect it this way. And then, you know, of course, since you have it down here, you might not want to have it on up here. So you don't have to do this to everything. Um, if you're trying to reverse the panning of your cymbals and your hi-hats, you only have to do them. Um, it won't interfere. So you could just up here, you know, you could just come up here and turn off those sounds. I could turn off the hi-hat here. And when I come down here, it's still on. Um, so you can just reverse the hi-hat and the ride cymbal by using this method right here. So you guys, I hope that was super helpful. I really love the hi-hat and the snare dampen thing because it's yet another way to manipulate these awesome drummer sounds more for your song so you can get the best results out of it. All right, so if you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comment section below and check out all these other videos that I've made here on my channel. There's over 230 of them. And um, of course, find me on Facebook and I have a Patreon page if you'd love to help my channel grow. I really do appreciate the patrons on my Patreon page, uh, which is, you know, patreon.com forward slash garage band and beyond. And besides that, oh, I'm taking videos by request a lot these days. So please leave your video requests in the comment section. And if you've made it this far into the video, 
Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, you guys. Peace.